Arte Agave podcast, as always, sponsored by the Arte Agave festivals. Find an Arte Agave festival in your city. Today, we're talking with Gigi from Mezcal de Soles, a uh, young entrepreneur, uh, launched this brand about three years ago. So we're going to get to know her and her story, and we're going to find out about all these beautiful botanicals that are in this Mezcal. Uh, stay tuned. All right. Welcome to another episode of the Arte Agave podcast. Uh, I'm here with Gigi, and uh, Gigi, I think you know the best thing to do is just give everyone you know who you are and 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 what you do, and give an introduction, and we'll go from there. I'm Gigi Mervis, and I am the founder of Desolis Mescal, which is a 100% Salmiana Mescal, and we're in five states right now, currently in the U.S., and we're going to be in Canada soon. So we're growing pretty fast, but we have a very, very special juice inside because it's very different. And um, I think it's showing and showcasing mescal in a different light than usual. Hmm. So that's kind of the, the overarching kind of story or what, well, who I am. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, so I, I, you know, to me, we, so we do our Arte Agave Festival. We work with like a lot of brands. I've been a bartender in New York for over 20 years. I see a lot of tequila and mezcal on the market. Um, you know, I'd love to understand why and how did you get into the the agave, um, you know, category. What was your what was your reasoning behind starting this mezcal brand? So prior to this mezcal brand, I actually started a tequila and coconut water company in college. Um, mm. So that's like about eight years ago. Okay, maybe, maybe ten years, almost like nine years ago. Um, so I where, kind of where did you go to school? I went to Columbia in okay. New York, and. Yeah. Um, I wasn't like a business. I was actually pre-med at the time. Wow. Um, so this was, it was a concept that became a reality. And this is before White Claw and all of those like premixes that are out right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I kind of got thrown into the alcohol industry, specifically tequila, and sort of fell in love with it at the time and, you know, had to go to tequila, had to like go to Mexico all the time. Um, and when I graduated, I launched the product then we were in two states and I, you know, that was my first project. And um, I was going at that time, you know, I'm, I'm sold that company about five years ago now, but um, I was going to Mexico all the time and I was drinking mezcal and everywhere in Mexico City, for example, everyone's drinking mezcal. Yeah. And there was like a million and not a million, but you know what I mean? And there's, they're all different types. And, you know, I started understanding it more and um, I'd also started drinking more mezcal because I realized that my stomach really wasn't hurting from it and it was just like the easiest liquor for me to drink. Hmm. So I started like getting more and more into it and I realized, wow, there's ones that aren't super smoky and there's ones that are. And I come back into the US and really there is no, there was nothing besides the smoky like espadine hmm. agaves. Yep. Um, and so it kind of all happened serendipitously, but I connected with the family that I had worked with for my first project. And they were telling me that they have someone that makes this amazing Salmiana agave juice. And I tried it and it was definitely something I've never had tried. And it was very different, but in a way that was, I think, very approachable for people who don't like mezcal um, and kind of shedded, sheds more light on this different type of agaves that exist mm. besides the espadine that's super smoky. So I decided to do it full time and make it into a Desolas brand. So, wow. So, to, I mean, if I could w walk you back a little bit. So you're pre med, traveling to Mexico a lot. And did you give up? I gave up pre med. <laughs> and you just went into <laughs> I was like, yeah, I gave up. Wow. So yeah, I mean, is... so I did go... graduate. I did graduate. Right. Um, but I, I had it with an economics major. But um, yeah. Yeah, so, so, but you were like, I like, I and like. My this parents were not happy though. at all. No, they were not. No. <laughs> so, it was, so, so you did. So you did your first brand. Your parents were probably like, I don't understand what you're doing. Have they changed their tune a little bit, or what's? Yes, because I think after they realized that, like, wait, she made it to Kilo coconut water, and now premixes are everywhere. Eight you're years like, ago. You're ahead of like, your time. You believe me with this mezcal thing now, do you? Right. <laughs> got it. Got it. So what what was that conversation like uh, years and years ago? Was it was it like, you know, where they were like, no, you're doing this? Or you were like, too bad. I'm, I'm going in a different direction. Yeah. Um, I think at first they were like, you know, as long as I was in school and I was, you know, hmm. keeping 
all my priorities, right? I think they were fine, but it's not like they come from an alcoholic background. It's not like, you know, I, I had to learn something they were already doing. It was like a completely new field. And um, I think it was really exciting, but it's taken me, you know, and I've been in specifically agave spirits in the alcohol industry for about like 10 years. And, you know, I've been in every part of like the different categories of, of alcohol from starting it to, you know, I had also a part where I worked for a different company um, mm. for Remy Martin for like, and I focused a lot on, you know, a brand that's existed for many years to then restarting another company that, um, which is Mescal, which is even more complicated than tequila. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think they've been really supportive in all my uh, decisions that were very random for them. Right, right, <laughs> right. Well, that that's cool. And that that's exciting because, I mean, there's so many people that, you know, go to school for one thing and end up not really finding their passion or finding their 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 why or their business that they want to do. It's, it's cool that you found it at a young age and you're still doing it today. Um, so tell, tell me, I mean, a little bit about the mezcal itself. I mean, you said it's, it's a little bit different. Why is it, why is it not smoky compared to some of the other mezcals uh, on the market? So we're made from the, f- the first of all, like, I mean, I'm sure you know the difference between tequila and mezcal and yeah. I'm sure your watchers also do, but, um, they're about like, there's so many different agaves that you can make mezcal out of. Um, we're just made from one called Salmiana agave. That's it from San Luis Potosí, which is an area, um, north of Mexico city. Not, it's not Oaxaca and it's known for producing mezcal from Salmiana. That's where it grows. Mm -hmm. Um, which makes this like earthier, I would say agave forward, uh, almost citrusy flavor. Mm. Um, so that's one reason why we're not as smoky. And the second reason is that we roast above ground instead of underneath the ground. So um, most of the time, like most espadines are roasted underneath the ground and that way, you know, you get more smoke within up before you create the yeah. liquid. So with us, we don't do that. And that's because that's intentional because the salmiana agave itself is so flavorful and has so many yeah. dimensions. Right. So you don't, you don't really want to mask any of those yeah. like, you know, forward botanicals and earthiness yeah. and, and things of that nature. Um, that's really cool. So how, how's it going? How many, how many years has this company been going for you? About three years now when we launched February, 2020. So right before oh, the world ended. Right before the pandemic. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. And I, we launched in New York and then, um, I moved to Miami and I moved the business there too. And, and since then it's been growing. Awesome. And how, how, I mean, you started right as the pandemic started. I mean, how, how was that? How did you get through it? How did, how do you launch a company right as the pandemic starts and survive it? You find ways to make it work. Mm. Um, I think the most important thing that, you know, we had as a company is we had just launched, we had all these plans and you kind of have to change them all. Mm. And the most important thing is really not to waste, not to make rash decisions and like those kind of, situations and Mm. completely pivot but there are ways you can really like be creative and stick through it and wait for like that phase of whatever the hardship to be kind of a little over to then overcome it and be stronger and I think Mm. that's kind of what we did um for that year obviously it was really difficult to grow in other markets but funny enough obviously like the alcohol industry itself is it was booming during that time but um luckily I found a way to get us into Miami quickly and Miami was a great market for us to be in. And from that, we had all this interest from other markets like Texas and California. So um, it actually worked out really great um, in a weird way for us. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but again, it was more about not making those rash decisions when you're, yeah. you know, in a place of uncertainty. Yeah. Not, not freaking out. Yeah. Right. And, and, uh, is there any, any specifics that you can share that you, you think you guys did, you know, the, the, the pivots, was there, uh, any details that you could share that that's helped you through the pandemic? I think that what we did was we, we focused on like, I think the market that we thought was going like the markets that we were already in hmm. and we really tried to like find ways to just get more presence within those markets and 
the other thing we did is we created an online platform at the time. Uh, and right away we did so we can do sh direct shipping, you know, uh, ship from the website kind of thing, um, which I think wasn't as popular prior to this. So right. uh, I think that really helped us as well. Um, yeah. Do so you think you, if there wasn't a pandemic, you think you would have done the direct shipping right away? Or you think because of the pandemic is that's why you really got into it? Um, we always had plans for that. Yeah. Uh, I think it was prior to the pandemic, it was really difficult to get direct to like to make alcohol direct to consumer kind of because it's still not really that it's just yep. like your party that handles it. Um, I think because of the pandemic, there were all these new avenues that people started getting into that helped facilitate that in a more like easy way because before it was just difficult to get alcohol shipped to your door. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So you're you're three years in. You're in. Would you say five five markets now? Five or markets. Five markets. What's the what's the plan over the next three to, three to five years? Here is just growing across the United States, or are you sticking with those five markets and just going deeper in those areas? I think we want to keep it um, in the markets that are making sense. But for example, like you know, we're going to be opening up another market, um, pretty much. And hopefully at the end of next month, but I'm flying to Colorado tomorrow because mm -hmm. we have a whole partnership with a lot of places in Aspen who have like expressed a lot of interest in Mescal and just working with us. So um, it's really like working with the people and the, the states or the accounts or whatever that makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. And um, currently, I think focusing in the accounts right now that we have and really making sure that we support the people that have been behind us, that's number one priority. Yeah, that's awesome. So there's no there's no major rush to get into 50 states. It's just, you no. know, gr growing the brand slowly. Slowly and really being like, I think what's the thing about the alcohol industry in general is you really do have to focus on, you know, making sure that whatever you are, wherever you're putting something, it's working as well. And, you know, you're you have the team in place and you have the things that you need in place to help it grow. Hmm. That Versus makes sense. growing quickly and kind of losing sight of what is important. Yeah. So speaking of team, what is, what does the team look like? I'm sure it's more than just you, right? And we're... Yeah. I mean, okay. <laughs> um, it's about like three people right now that are wow. working with me. Um, and then I have about like three more people that work in different markets. Yeah. And we have our distributors. And then our events people, we have our PR team. So we have like different teams, but yeah. Yeah. So basically it's, it's you, you and a few people that are doing all this. Us and a few. Yes. Yeah. With a lot of, with a lot of help of different companies. Yes. Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> that's, uh, that's cool. And it, it's really, it's really cool to, to, to hear, um, like I said, my background working with so many brands, you see, I know sometimes you see like 50 people on a, on a, on a, in a company and, and a team and they just expand so quickly and then you never see them again um, kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's cool that it's, you know, basically you, a few people um, and then you're growing, you're growing slowly and growing in the right way. So um, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. And, and I, yeah, and we I like love to it. keep it very like easy. Yeah. Got it. I think that's important for now, you know, like where it's not super complicated, anything done. So the more, yeah. 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 So, so where, where do you get, I mean, obviously you, you started college for one reason. You seem to be, you know, a headstrong entrepreneur, started a business, sold the business, started another one. Where, where do you get this entrepreneur spirit from? Is it something that you just develop the family? Uh, who, who's, who's been inspiring you along the way? You know, I kind of I get that question a lot. And um, I, I've always kind of, started something like when I was in middle school, when I was in high school, I've always had this thing where I'd do something that I felt like, oh, there's a hole in this particular market or there's something missing and I kind of started. I think um, my dad has been, he's an entrepreneur, he's an immigrant. Um, he's uh, He's done a lot, you know, in his life. And definitely think his energy is exciting. I think we're different types of entrepreneurs. I think I'm mm. way more of a risk taker than he ever was or is, Yeah. <laughs> but he's definitely, which in a way is um, great. Cause I can kind of see what I, I need to keep kind of a, 
a lesser risk mentality sometimes. Right. So he does inspire me. Um, but in general, I think it's just kind of something that you sort of just have it in you. Yeah. And I think it's more about the end pro- like product, how you feel. Hmm. And you just really can't imagine not having something that you want in existence. And so you just it. keep going no matter what. And like number one thing is no is not a no ever. So that's hmm. the, the when you get a no, it's like just encouragement to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So that, I mean, so you've kind of had this all along. I mean, you mentioned it since, since middle school. Um, and it seems like when you're met with adversity, you're like, we'll just, we'll figure out a different way to do it. Yeah. I figure out a way to get that no into a yes. That's awesome. I like Always. that. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Very, very, very inspirational, um, which, which is, which is really cool. So, so what what else is happening with with the business um you know is the, is it for you personally is it just every day all day long um are you out meeting the distributors are you doing the sales i mean what does your day to day look like these days um so it's everything right i manage all the different parts yeah. um but i do do a lot of the sales um because that's super important and i think that just my experience for 10 years of working in this industry is like created a network of people that I know that I can, you know, go and go out and do the things that I need to do. But um, I think a lot of what I also am is the creative side of this because I did, we did do the, you know, I did create the brand itself and worked amazingly with my designer that I've been still working with for 10 years. She also helped me with my first project cool. and um, kind of keeping the brand like alive and full of energy, I think is really important to me. So whether it's, you know, figuring out what's the next move to showcase it in a way. Because I think my goal in general as this, for this brand is to really showcase Mascal in a different light. Mm-hmm. And I think people are really scared of Mascal because they think it's super smoky and right. they don't realize that it could be so many different things. Um, and I think – I don't know if I'm going on a tangent or not. You can stop no, me. No, please, please, please. Um, I like it. What I do is that, that I, everything that I do is kind of to help get that message across so that mm-hmm. like, you know, whether it's mixing in cocktails or whether it's sampling people or it's whatever it is and wh- whatever the education, I think there is a kind of right now mezcal is super popular, but there's still a lack of education around it. Yeah. And there is so much opportunity with – like different agaves. And I think what we did, which is a bit different, is we made – there are mezcals with this agave, but they're at a super high price point, and they're usually like a specialty of a brand. So you get like the Salmian agave varietal, but it's, you know, $80 and above. So ours mm-hmm. is, you know, $50, $49. So we're very price – we're approachable in terms yeah. of that. Um. Yeah. Do you, do you, th- I mean, do you think, uh, I mean, do you feel that you miss know, is a little intimidating for like the American consumer? No, I actually think it's really approachable. That's hmm. the whole angle. I think it's um, because. But do you, it's, but do you think so- in the minds of consumers right now that they are a little intimidated by it? In the, the word mezcal you're saying. Right. Yeah. The general yeah. mezcal. Right. Yeah. I think that people are, I think, well, for example, a lot of cocktails right now, they're mixing mezcal and tequila just to create like a lesser smoky cocktail because mm-hmm. people want to order mezcal, but then they don't necessarily want maybe that. They're, they're not in love with the taste or they don't, they think it's too smoky or whatever that is. Um, I think consumers want to try it. And I think it's because there's a trend obviously happening, yeah. you know, mezcal is growing yeah. exponentially and I think it's following the same trend as tequila, to be honest, because I think 10 years ago, you know, people stopped drinking vodka and people were drinking tequila. And now people are starting, those tequila drinkers are switching to mezcal. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Like I said, we, we started our festivals about 10 years ago and I kind of saw the writing on the wall as a bartender. People were asking about, you know, I know Patron's out there. What else is there? What's a Reposado? What's a Nejo? Um, So we created the event just to, kind of start educating that consumer 
but mezcal wasn't around really at all. Like yeah. consumers thought it was a new product. They were like, what is this new thing, mezcal? Not even knowing the history of They thought mezcal. it was like a brand called mezcal, yeah. Yeah, they were like, what is this new thing? And I'm like, well, it's really been around for about 500 years. But um, so, but now, like I said, even at our events, you know, year one, when I did Arte Agave, we had, you know, like we had a like illegal mezcal. That was like one mezcal brand that we had there. 10 years later, the events that we do is almost like 60, 40, 60% tequila, 40% mezcal. To your, but to your point, the agave category has gone through the roof and now everyone's kind of being like, what else? You know, we're Americans, we get bored. Like, what's the new thing? What's the next thing? So I, I see that mezcal, um, everyone's not, not necessarily jumping ship, but they wanted, they wanted, they want to be introduced to mezcal. Um, well, I also your... think it, sorry to cut you off. Sorry. No, go ahead. No, yeah. no, I also think that, um, consumers that switched, right? These are the consumer like 10 years ago from vodka to tequila is because they wanted something handmade. They wanted something artisanal at the time tequila, you know, was it, you were getting small batches. There were different tequila brands that were making like, you know, not that much tequila and you knew you were getting something organic versus vodka was like the biggest category. It was impossible to get something that's really truly made by hand that you can like kind of rely on. And I think the whole thing that, you know, it was made from a plant and all that's why people switched. And I think at this point, tequila is so mass market. There's every celebrity is behind a tequila, um, which is what happened with vodka. I think with mezcal, it's such a small category, even though it is popular, it's still so small of a category that you are getting, you know, a pure product. You know, it's making, mm. it's being made by hand. You know that, you know, that's the whole thing about mezcal. It's made by hand. It's artisanal. No batch is the same, which is like, kind of a challenge as well. It's a side note. Um, <laughs> so I think that's why con those consumers are switching because they want, yes, they want to try something that's, you know, maybe more flavorful because tequila now is because it's so mass market, right? All the flavors are becoming similar. So yeah, that's my take. I don't know. Yeah. And, and, and that, that makes a lot of sense. And it, cause, cause you're at your point where it's, we've you know, we kind of hit this point with the tequila where it's, you know, it's just for the masses now. And, and you said that there's so many celebrities behind it. Um, everyone's shifting to like, what's new, what's more exciting, what's more artisanal. Um, and speaking of all, all the celebrity tequilas that are out there, do you, how do you, how do you compete with the rock and kit and, and all, all these celebrities that have things out there? It's like, how do you, as a small producer, how, how do you compete against, you know, those big brands and then the big celebrity brands? So, of course, you get, you know, sometimes you can't compete because their money speaks um, yeah. sometimes. But truly, I think we do have a really amazing flavor. I don't know if you've tried it yet. Not yet. I'm excited, okay. though. So yeah. it's very good. We actually just won um, gold in the Tequila Masters in London. Do you know what I'm talking about? Congratulations. And... Um, I think it's a big deal because they called me and they were like, you're out of a bunch of applicants. You guys won. I was really excited. <laughs> but um, And they want to actually meet with me because uh, they really like the flavor. They want to bring it into London. So um, I really believe in the actual mezcal. And I do think a lot of people still want to work with companies that are genuine and have something that's like really special versus like just because a celebrity endorsed it. Mm -hmm. And secondly, we have, although our team is small, we have such a loyalty to the people that we work with that we make sure that like, if you decide to work with us and really help push our mezcal, we really do work with you as well. We don't just leave you or, you know, throw you a bunch of marketing events and leave you forever. Creating, creating more of a partnership. <laughs> yes, than... we do really work that way. Yeah. yeah, And, and that's something that I truly believe in. I think you have to you know, really work with the bartenders that are better behind you. You really have to, because those, you know, those people are the ones that you're working with that really do change your brand. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I 100% agree with that. And kind of going to back to one of my points before I've seen companies come into markets, a lot of swag, a lot of cash. Um, and you're really just, it's really just a transaction, right? You're just, you're just having a transaction. But to me, when I was behind the bar, my, the greatest thing that, it was when an owner came in and said, thank you for like that to me, I'll pour your, your brand for years mm -hmm. just because you took the time to come in say hello, thank me, gave me a nice tip, whatever handshake. Um, 
those things go a very, very long way. Um, and to your point, I don't think, I think some brands just think we're, we're cool. We're this, we're going to be great. Um, and you know, some people forget the hand sale. They forget their, your, it's a people business. Um, so I, it's, it's, it's kind of nice that to hear you say that and say that, you know, you're trying to create partnerships and work with those bartenders. Um, cause some people overlook that and then they're here one year and two years later, they're off the market. Yeah. I think that that's why I do have faith in people. I know of course you compete, but I do. And, um, yeah, I agree with you with what you just said. Yeah. Cool. I mean, so, so, you know, you obviously you got, you have to market the brand. Is there anything you're going all in on? Is it social media? Is it influencers? Is it events? Is it parties? Is there any avenue that you're going down directly for, for marketing wise? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I, we have no one thing that we're like, this is what we're going to do everything. Um, yeah. we really like, I, I really like to have balance, like what we're, um, focusing on because I think, and then I think if something's working, we do more of it. But. Mm. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And, and, and sorry that I'm going so specific on the things that you're doing. I find, I find it very interesting, um, your business <laughs> and how you're running your business. So, um, I, I, I just get curious to see what people are doing and, and how they're I'm doing it. Any of my secrets. So it doesn't, <laughs> don't, care. don't, share, don't. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you share, you share only, only what you want to share. Um, which, which, which is fine with me. Um, yeah. So, so tell me, tell me, I guess a little bit more about the brand. Is there, is it going to be expansion into other types of the mezcal or are you just going to be sticking with the, with the one? Yes. So I'm actually really or, excited. I'm going to go allowed to share that. I am allowed to share. I'm really excited. Um, we're going, I'm going to taste, we're aging mezcal right now. So oh, cool. we will be making a super awesome, very cool bottle that we've been working on with our Mexican designer now for a while now. Um, and we're aging Salmiana agave, which will probably be the, one of the only aged Salmiana. Mm. Um, it's going to have a super interesting flavor and I'm really excited because we're going to try like to see what it's what it's tasting like, if it's ready to be taken out or not, or. Can you share what it's being aged in? Is it just going to be like a Reposado or an Ajo or is it aged in? I can't something share personal? yet because yeah, can't share yet. Man. All right. All right. Yeah. Lots of but I'm excited and we'll send you one and it's going to be super fancy. Please, 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 <laughs> please send me one. Um, I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. So, so uh, give me, if you can, if you can share a little bit about your, you know, your background and, and, and growing up, you know, you, I said, you mentioned your dad was an entrepreneur, um, other family members, mom, grandparents, you know, we're, I'm trying, I'm trying to find out where you got this. Where, why are you so curious? <laughs> this spirit, it, I, cause I love it. I, I find inspiration when I, when I meet people that, are supposed to go to college for one thing and just go in a different direction and start their own businesses. Um, I think it's fascinating. I think it's really cool. And I try to give like my listeners. I don't understand where it comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if not, you know cause, cause I, cause I understand not, that question. I, I not everybody say. has it and everybody wants it and they think, wow, they, they're going to look at you and say, wow, this girl created her own business, two businesses right out of college, which I think is so inspirational for people. Um, and I try to understand like, you know, cause some people just live their lives in mediocrity where they just, they wanted to do something, but they never did it. And I'm, you know, I, I try to like, how do I kind of give a little of your inspiration to some of the listeners to say, huh, maybe, maybe I could do it too. So I think what is success is really, um, it's dependent on what you think is success, right? So everyone has their own, it's a relative. So everyone has their own way of like, this is what is successful to me. Um, I think the thing about people, like the word entrepreneur is so overused because I think at one point everyone and their mom wanted to be an entrepreneur and then like left their jobs and started a company and failed, it's got sad, started working somewhere else again. That was like kind of a phase. But true like entrepreneurs or I think are people who – it's not about like starting something on your own. It's not like that's not the thing that makes you excited. It's the actual thing, if mm. that makes sense. So like, it's not like I want, and I, a lot of what I do, even though I come up with the idea or I'm 
very, I push it forward. I love working with people. Like I love having a team. I love having um, people around me. Like I up, I like uplifting them with me. I like bringing them together with me. And I think it's fun because the end product is so fulfilling because it's never like an end. There's always like a new thing to do. And I, I think that that's what keeps me going is that like with specifically alcohol, it gives me an ability to do all the things I love because, you know, I also DJ. That's another thing. So okay. I do like a lot. It, it gives me, I love to do throw dinner parties. I love hmm. to like create cocktails. I love to like entertain, mix with, I love talking to people. I love coming up with like party ideas. I like design and all of these things. It gives me something to like put all my energy in. And hmm. when I get to the next place, that's not the end. It's kind of the start to the next thing. So hmm. maybe that's what encourages me. But I think as a, for other people, they're like sometimes people don't get that excitement from that and that's probably why they don't keep going because i think when you truly feel happiness and excitement all the things that don't work which are constant right there's literally like something goes wrong every second those are those are just little like blurs in my like you know hmm. so i think i don't know if that's making any sense but yeah v very very well said yeah and and you know it's be entrepreneurship is not is not for everybody. And, and you guys said, yeah, maybe, have, maybe, yeah. And may, yeah, maybe you're not, you know, people are not doing what they want because they haven't found that thing yet. Um, or they just aren't, they don't get happiness from the accomplishment as much as that I do. Hmm. So that, and they, for, they don't like the little things that go wrong. And right. those are the things that cause more, like that doesn't cause me as much stress because I'm excited about what I'm going to keep going. And, obviously there's so many things that fail. Like I've failed at so many things prior to this, right. you know, not saying this is success yet because I don't think so right now, but um, the amount of people never talk about their failures, but like the amount of things that didn't work out because, you know, of no re for no reason, they just didn't work out and you have to kind of accept it and yep. realize, okay, you have to move forward, which is what I'm saying. Like not everyone can kind of accept it and make it a blur in their yeah. mind and keep going. Because right. we're affected by it, which that's a talent and a skill, I think that, or maybe not, you know, I don't know. <laughs> that's a, that's a big talent and a big skill to, to look at because everyone sweats the small things and you're saying that you don't sweat any of the small things. They're little things, little things. Yeah. That's an just... easy way to say what I just said. I just said it in a complicated way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I would love to ask you, like, how did you, how did you learn? How did you learn that? Cause most people. Back to my parents. That's all I was raised. That was, you know, the belief stays instilled in me. Like hmm. definitely, you know, I think I've always, they've raised me to when some, like to believe that when something goes wrong, like it's supposed, you know, you're, it's something good's going to happen from it. Hmm. And I think that that, is always in the back of my head. As soon as something goes really bad, I'm like, something really good is about to happen. <laughs> Great mindset. Yeah. <laughs> that's something that they they instilled in me. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right. I'll stop talking about your parents now. Um, <laughs> tell me I'm about the DJ parties. How do I get – what's that? <laughs> I'm going to make sure they listen to this. They're going to be like, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> uh, well, it's cool. Like I said, there, you, just, you just seem to have some really cool – um, things about you that, you know, I just I I wanted to see what, where, where it kind of comes from. So, uh, but again, how, how do I get invited to these DJ parties? Uh, that, that well, you know, the, you know, the girl that's DJing, so you can get invited that way. Um, no, so I DJ now I DJ just sometimes, and it's usually our own events. Like cool. if we're doing something, usually most of the events that are, that we do, I like music is super important and it's a really important element. So we work with different artists and DJs and um, we have an event that happens at, oh, well, you don't, in Miami, we have a recurring event where we like bring in um, kind of DJs that are traveling to Miami or from mm -hmm. Miami and we give them a platform that's like a bit smaller and more intimate. We do a cool mezcal party. Um, so music in general is something like, event with the music part of the event is super important to me. So I usually will DJ at the end of the night or something like if I feel like it, but I don't DJ anymore. Like where I'm DJing, DJing. Got it. Got it. So mu music's part of your life, creating the experience is part of your life. It's all like Food. one DJ party at all times. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. This is a fun, this is a fun brand. I like, I like, I like what's happening. So tell me about the scene in Miami. We, we actually are launching our, our Te Agave festival in Miami 
um, in May. Uh, and we're doing it because every time I do an event, everyone's like, you got to go to Miami. You got to go to Miami. So we're yeah. heading down to Miami. What's the scene like? you know, at what, you know, we're post pandemic. What's the scene like these days? What's happening with the agave scene down in Miami? So one, I'm from Miami originally, and I love Miami. I think awesome. Miami is a great place. And I, I really do. It has changed so much in the past three years. I think, mm. have you been there recently? No, I have not been in years. So you're going to be extremely surprised because it's just, there's so many different pockets of like, okay different areas that are just really interesting with amazing restaurants that open and bars. A lot of people have moved there. A lot of like cool, awesome, exciting people have moved there that are kind of adding that flavor that I think Miami didn't have for a while because it was okay. really have that like, I would say it was definitely international, but it wasn't, there wasn't that many young people that moved from like New York or California. And I think you're getting a lot of that mm. um, when it comes to like the, the scene in general of um, alcohol. Mescal is everywhere. I think it's on like every menu, um, especially in most places. Tequila is like, has always been on every menu, but yeah, that's definitely like number one. I don't know if, I, I think tequila just surpassed like whiskey in America and it's like gonna surpass yeah. uh, vodka next year, vodka. which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's crazy. Um, yep. So the scene in general with that is I think people are curious. There's a lot of really awesome new mixologists that are like really changing the scene in Miami as well. And I think it would be great to have, like I think what it was lacking is a lot of people who are from the industry that really love mixology. And I think there there's way more people now than there was before. Mm. And I think having you guys there and kind of doing something would just add more yeah. commitment to it. Yeah. So how do you think, I mean, I, you kind of described how it changed. What do you, what do you think it was like 10 years ago in Miami compared to now? Like what is the big difference? I know you said there's a lot of transplants that came in, but like, what was the I think it's just more culture? I think there's more, um, there's just more of everything. Mm -hmm. Right. So like there was kind of, it was a little bit like there's a few places to go and a Got few it. areas that you can go. Now there's a, you know, a lot of areas you can go, all these areas that are, were never developed like they're very developed in Miami and there's a lot of restaurants that from a lot all over the world that are opening there so I think it's just definitely like it's a very busy city currently cool and like with terms of traffic it's awful right now. <laughs> it's not built because Miami's not built to like accommodate all this there's no transport like there's no public transportation not so at all yeah that's like the big issue oh actually. Well, and and the weather's beautiful down there still, right? The weather is still hot. The weather, yeah. is, there's still the beach. Okay. You know, okay. the best part about living in Miami is coming back to Miami when you're done, like mm. whenever you're traveling. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, I don't live in such a bad place. Yeah. But no. it took me a really long time to appreciate it because I was living in New York for 10 years before. Yeah. Well, New York is, yeah, New York's a lot different than Miami. Yeah. Um, but I hear there's a lot of New Yorkers down in Miami these days. I could be wrong. Yeah, we're all flooding them the the Miami area. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a fun city to be. Um, well, cool. Listen, I, I thank you for your time, and I, I appreciate you doing this. Um, anything else you want to add to 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 the listeners about the brand or what you guys are up to before we? Uh... I think there was one thing that I didn't add, which was um, what the brand means, which is yeah, uh, de solas, which means of the sun. Well, mm. it doesn't mean it exactly. It's like a derivative of the word, and um. I want it. I do really feel like everything that we try to do with our brand is kind of, you know, we use the word sun in a lot of it and we try to keep it warm and positive. And that's kind of like the, the really the brand overarching like brand that I've created. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know if you want to add that. To yeah, this, no, I want, I want like, to add that all question a lot. What does DeSolas mean? So yeah. I, I want to add all the details of the brand and where, where can people find it? Um, your Instagram, if you could share that and sure. as well. Yeah. I uh, just add to Solas Mescal. You can find it there. You can order uh Solas Mescal on desolasmescal.com. Um, if you get two bottles, you get a discount uh, cool. for just now, but um, yeah, I think the people should try it because it's definitely going to open up your eyes to different types of mescal. 
Yeah, I, I love that. And what's your what's your favorite cocktail to make it with? Besides on the rocks, mm. slash lights off. Um, I really like. I like to add a little bit of. I call it a GG mm. um, because it has ginger beer. <laughs> I add like a fresh squeezed lime juice and like a splash of ginger beer, and love like it. not like a full thing, and it's an amazing cocktail. Yeah, nice. Okay, the GG. But if you're not drinking, you like it just kind of. Just, I, I like it on its own with its an own. orange slice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. Um, I like my mezcal in a glass with a, yes. a little orange slice, maybe a little tahini on the orange slice. Yeah, um, and it's interesting with Jasolas. Every time you, it, it's really like you first sip it, and as you keep sipping it, it kind of changes. It's very interesting. Mm. In a good cool. Well, I'm listen. I'm very excited. I'm very excited to meet you. Thank you for this, and I'm excited to 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 taste your brand and. Yeah. Um, hopefully we can, you know, we're down there with the Arte Agave Festival. Hopefully we can have you there. Um, Thank you so and maybe, much. maybe do some parties around it and throw some DJ. Yeah. Well, you let me know and maybe I'll even DJ. I, no, <laughs> we're definitely going to DJ. <laughs> at least, at least for one song. We're going to, we'll get you, we'll get you behind there for one song. <laughs> Um, well, listen again, th thank you for your time and, and I appreciate this and, uh, and thanks for sharing your story. Thank you so much. It's been All really right. nice talking. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye.